Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about meconium stained amniotic fluid. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get into this. So, what is the word meconium? So meconium is our first intestinal discharge from a newborn infant. So whether they are inside or outside of the womb, it is still their first discharge, their first poop, right? And then our Amniotic fluid is our fluid that helps cushion and nourish our fetus when we are in utero. It's creating all of that fluid, a little bit of movement, a little bit of bounce so that baby is able to be safely brought to term. And what happens when we have meconium, our, our first intestinal discharge, our first poop, and amniotic fluid getting mixed together? How does that happen? Well, baby loses sphincter control. Baby loses control of being able to hold in and all of a sudden we have our passive poop. So why does that occur? There is fetal hypoxia, something that occurs possibly with a little bit of compression on the cord, a baby is getting ready to be pushed out, ready to give birth, and a lot of that trauma, a little bit of uh, pressure on the cord can cause that hypoxia. Well, that hypoxia stimulates our vagus nerve, right? And then we have peristalsis of the GI, and then we have a relaxation of our sphincter and produce some poop. And you're gonna know that this happened because of why. What is your assessment immediately as a nurse? We know that green amniotic fluid might be a sign of our meconium stained amniotic fluid. Also baby being in the breech position, right? If you think about it, baby is now head to mom's head and bottom to cervix vagina. So if baby does pass a stool, it's going to be readily available right there at the birth canal. And there also might be on the external fetal monitor some variable or decelerations that we're noticing from that compression, from that cause of hypoxia. So you as a nurse are gonna do a couple different things. The, the one thing you're gonna do is document the time, color, and consistency of that amniotic fluid, that rupture of membranes. And we wanna make sure that we're noting this because if we do see that deep green color, and we do see a little thicker consistency, something that doesn't really look like water, but something else is going on, we want to make sure that we notify the neonatal team at this time because with meconium stained amniotic fluid is a risk for aspiration and a risk for infection. So we want to make sure that we immediately move into moving mom to side lying and applying some oxygen that's at 8 to 10 on the mask because what we're looking at here is again that sign of hypoxia with baby. So when baby is then born, we're going to go right into our APGAR. We want to make sure that baby is doing okay, that there is no compromise in breathing, the heart rate and everything looks great, and we're going to be suctioning mouth and nose with the bulb syringe. So great that you called the neonatal team at bedside because now they are there to assist with this as well as possibly while you're taking care of mom. If the heart rate is greater than 100 and baby's got good respiration effort, baby looks good, baby's color's good, we can immediately move to skin to skin. However, if it's not looking so great, the heart rate maybe is a little less than 100 or they're having a poor effort, we want to move them to the radiant warmer and then we're, they're going to move into the endotracheal suctioning, meaning we got to get a little more suctioning out. There might be other fluids or things within our breathing or respiratory pattern that we need to get out. But overall, what I want you to understand from this lecture is that, that meconium stained amniotic fluid is a risk for aspiration and then infection. So we wanna make sure that we are documenting color, consistency, and time, and we are letting our neonatal team know because we are thinking respiratory for baby. We are thinking about respiratory effort. And that's it. That's what you have to think about. So I hope this video made sense. I hope you get something from this lecture. And as always, until next time.